Today I'm going to be replacing this bridge that I built some time ago and I must have been on drugs when I built it because it's, well it looks okay but structurally it's terrible. I'm also going to be trying out a few different new things today as well because I've got myself a new headphone microphone setup so it might make me sound just a little bit different and because I don't know that much about bridges I'm going to be yakking on about something else completely different. What I'm going to replace it with is a representation of the bridge, uh, uh, the mainline bridge over the River Neen at Peterborough. I think this type of bridge, style of bridge, is called a Whipple Truss Bridge. If I'm wrong, I'm sure somebody will tell me. But that's what it looks like to me. And it's called a Whipple. And it's, no, well, it's named after Squire Whipple. And he was uh, an American. Born 16th September 1804 and died 15th March 1888, aged 83. The way I constructed the bridge that I'm building is from 30 thou styrene sheet or plastic old sheet if you prefer. And that will be with uh, box girder uh, main structures as well. And just a little bit of a disclaimer as well. If you found your way here via the uh, schools that do bridge building and test them to destruction, Unfortunately, you're going to be a bit miffed because I won't be testing it to destruction. This is for a model railway and it will be a working bridge and it won't be destroyed. I cut out all the component parts for this build before I actually started putting anything together. So while that's playing out, I'll just tell you about what's coming up in the in the next couple of videos. I've got uh, two wagon videos I can hear the groans already and uh, I'm looking at an engine that I'm going to be doing modifications to as well so that will be coming up in two or three videos time now bridges feature quite heavily on my railway they have to and you might have seen one that stars quite a big role in some of my other videos and that will be this one up in the top corner now which is uh, a, another representation of one of my other favourite bridges which is just outside Liverpool Street which is the Commercial Street Bridge the A1202 so I decided to mock everything up and dry fit everything make, make sure everything fitted and then I s spray painted all of the parts with um, Halford's primer this was because I knew that putting it together with the box-like construction was going to create voids that I was not going to be able to get into. With the main construction pretty much finished, it was time to turn my attention to the deck, which was constructed out of several packets of Pico LK156 loco inspection pits glued together and took the uh, lengths of rail out of well the short lengths of rail in the in the packets and then stripped a complete length of um, one meter flexi track and threaded that through I'd salvaged these parts from the previous bridge and the only thing that I had to do to them was cut out the slots in the in the channel for the cross members this was just so I could get it to sit low enough and for as aesthetic appearance as well but I'm really short on height above the rails that it was going over so I just needed to drop it down just a little bit I then bought a couple of packets of ratio models plastic um, Pratt truss gantries that are supposed to be for signals but I used them for the well, uh, what would you call it the roof of the the bridge I've got uh, six gaps to fill and one packet filled one gap so uh, I've got to go back to the model shop and get a few more because they didn't have enough and I was I didn't want to send away for them and rather than just using one part out of all of the packets I then utilized some of the other bits and pieces in it just so that I 
wasn't wasting money really. But at the same time, I didn't want it to end up be looking like a sci-fi spaceship with bits and pieces bolted on the outside. So I only used pretty much the basic bits, the ladders and all the trussing. Although saying that, I have ended up with a box full of spare parts. But, you know, I'm sure they'll come in handy for another project. Then it was back outside into the open air for its final undercoat. When I say undercoat, what I ended, I ended up just weathering this and it turned out okay. Just a bit of colour modulation, a few washes, it was fine. Then it was back into the garage and modifying the abutments and parapets ready for installation. I've only got a couple of days work this week so I should have time to do a bonus video this week as well which because we're, I'm nearly at 100 subscribers woohoo uh, I thought I might do a, a tour of the railway and have a look under the workbench and see what's on it and that about wraps this one up well it's been another enjoyable build thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.